What's up guys, today we are learning 10 easy to do video transitions using After Effects. It's a quick and simple way to make your video stand out. Hello everyone, my name is Nares and today we are going to create 10 go to transitions using After Effects which you are going to use for your every video. And don't forget to watch 4th and 9th which are my favorite. Camera Lens Blur let us start with some simple transition that uses a blur effect and some keyframes. We will be using the camera lens blur effect. We can do it in After Effects by just creating an adjustment layer and then adding the camera lens blur effect to keyframe the blur radius so that it starts at zero, just a few frames from when you want the transition to happen. Move the playhead over and bump that blur the radius up. To add another keyframe then move your playhead over and have it go back to zero. Now you have a smooth transition that feels like you threw the camera out of focus for a brief moment and then snap back to focus to reveal a new scene. Fast blur transition. This cool transition also uses camera blur effect. Is not only super easy to do but it's also a great way to add intensity to your scene. All you need to do is create an adjustment layer, apply the fast blocks blur effect to it and then create keyframes with different blur amounts. Now for the keyframes, I am alternating between the low number and high number to create a bit of flicker effect and just make sure that these keyframes are happening where I want the transition to happen between my two sorts. Change the blur dimension to either horizontal or vertical depending on your taste. And you have got your another high intensity transition. If you like cool matched up visuals like I do then you are going to thoroughly enjoy this particular one. Because it's a transition that a lot of people know and now you will too. The RGB split transition is done by first highlighting both of your clips and then pre-composing them with command shift c duplicate this new composition twice by hitting command d so that you have three layers in total we are going to apply an effect called shift channels to all the three layers for one of the layers have it so that they take a red form is set to red and then turn off the blue and green ones by clicking full off go to the next layer and take green from the set to green and then turn off the red and blue. Finally go to the last layer and will set to blue for take blue from while having the red and green off. Now you have got three layers separated into different color channels red, green and blue. To glue them back into the normal image set the blending mode to screen for all three layers. We are right back to where we started. Let's apply one more effect that's really going to make this transition happen the wiggle position effect on one of the layers and let's keyframe the wiggle speed and wiggle amount so that it starts at zero. Before we want the transition to happen, move the playhead to the transition point and increase those numbers up to something that looks good. Let's just do 20 and 54 now. Move the playhead to where you want the transition to end and set both numbers to zero. Now copy the wiggle position effect and transform effect and paste them to another one of the layers let's play it back and now you have got a sick rgb split transition now if you don't like how the edges of the frame are showing during the wiggle apply the motion tile effect and shift it to the very top of your effects click on the checkbox for the mirror edges box and then increase the output width and output height numbers this transition effect is very popular wipe transition here is one of my favorite transitions. This wipe transition is one of the easiest transition to do in After Effects. You might have seen this pretty often for something super simple and clean. Just highlight your second clip by clicking it and then going to the rectangle tool to draw a box out of frame. First, which will create a mask. If you have highlighted your clip, go to the drop down menus of your second clip to reveal the mask path and then add a keyframe just a bit before where you want the transition to happen. Move your playhead over a few frames for when you want the transition to end. Double click the box that you drew 
and then expand it so it reveals the whole image. So let's add easy ease to the keyframes by highlighting them and then hitting F9 to go to the graph editor which is this button over here. Make sure you are looking at the speed graph and then drag the handle so that you have this nice cow. Now you have got this polished transition ready to be used in your next video. Now you can change it by having it wipe from bottom to top or even diagonally with how much you can do with this technique. There are lots of variations. Punch zoom. The punch zoom is a dynamic way to feel like you are pushing through into the next scene. Highlight both of your clips and hit the shortcut S to bring up the scale for clip 1. Keyframe it so that it starts at 100 and then scales up up to something like 150 at the moment of the transition. Clip 2 will end at 100 but starts a bit less than that like around 80. Then apply the motion tile effect to your second clip just like what we did with the RGB split transition. We want to hide the edges of clip by checking mirror edges and then increasing up the values of your output width and output height. Easy is those keyframes. Let's go back to the graph editor for clip 1 by clicking the keyframe and then clicking that graph editor icon. Pull the handle from the left and tuck the handle on the right to get this gradual ramp up. Let's go to the second clip graph editor to adjust those keyframes and do the opposite, drag over the right handle and tuck the left one. The last thing we want to do is enable motion blur by toggling motion blur for both layers. If you don't see this option, just click the toggle switches mode button at the bottom. This next one also uses the motion tile effect and it's the perfect technique for creating a really seamless transition. Whip pan. The first thing we want to do is apply the motion tile effect to your first clip. Check off the mirror edges box and bump up the numbers for the output width and output height. Let's also copy and paste this effect to our second clip, highlight both the clips and hit the shortcut P to bring up the position. Let's keyframe the starting position of your first clip by hitting the stopwatch moving our playhead close to the transition point and then moving our X position so that clip moves left this will automatically add a keyframe that I will want to move over to the transition point for the second clip. Let's keyframe the ending position and then go to the start of this clip before we move the X position to the right. If we play it back it looks like a camera pans to the right revealing your second shot. Let's highlight those keyframes and hit F9 because that's the secret sauce to making your animation instantly look pro. Now let's do what we did for the punch zoom effect and go into the graph editor for both the clips so that we can create a ramp up for the first clip and, and then ramp down for the second clip. Now our whip pan is way smoother and you can even toggle motion blur to glue everything together into one extremely satisfying transition. Let's make a fake film burn effect. Between your two clips, create a new adjustment layer and click on the pen tool to create a new mask. You are going to roughly draw the shape of a film making sure that the mask path is keyframed around where you want the transition to happen. Go to the next frame and shape that mask like so that it's another abstract shape. Do the same thing for the next frame giving you a total of three keyframes with different mask positions. Let's trim the adjustment layer just to keep the things tidy. And next you want to drop the curves effect onto the adjustment layer and raise up the curve line so it looks pretty faded and bright. Let's click your adjustment layer and hit F to bring up the mask feather. Bump that number up so that edges of your mask are super soft. Now we are going to introduce some color to our film burn by creating a solid with a shortcut control plus Y. Burns usually have an orangey reddish hue so let's choose something close to that color. Select the adjustment layer and hit M to bring up the mask, highlight it and copy and paste it to this solid we just made. You can make some small adjustment to the mask path and feather before going to the blending mode and switching it to screen. 
You can also duplicate this layer and switch the color to something more yellowy by hitting Ctrl Shift Y to make changes to the solid and just play with the mask feather and mask expansion so that it doesn't spill everywhere as much. You can always add some noise by creating a new adjustment layer, trimming it, applying the noise effect and playing with the amount of noise I find 5 to be pretty good. You can uncheck use color noise and here you are left with a sick film bump transition that's been a really popular one to use. A very modern transition that we will create now combines three effects that are often used in After Effects. First, let's pre-compose our two clips by hitting Ctrl Shift C, very similar to what we did in RGB Split and Punch Zoom. We will apply the wiggle position effect and keyframe it so that the wiggle speed and wiggle amount gradually increase and then decrease as it reaches your second clip. Make sure to highlight the keyframes and hit F9 to smooth out the motion. Apply motion tile and place it at the top of your effects as we want to avoid the edges of the frame showing. So let's hit mirror edges and increase the output width and height. The final effect that will be dropping on this layer is echo effect. Changing the number of echoes to something like 5 just to start but the amount is totally up to you. You can also set the decay amount to whatever you like and it means that the lower the number the more transparent. This is going to be making sense when you are going to play it back. Lastly we want to adjust the echo operator to either maximum or minimum and it all depends on what looks better to you and your footage. Let's get into this transition that doesn't even require any effects which makes it one of my favorites. All you have to do is highlight both of your clips and hit the shortcut T to bring up the opacity just like what we did with the fast blur flashes. We are going to alternate between high values and low values so that the clips will flicker between the two shots. All you have to do is play it back. Guys, the last one is also my favorite, the paper transition effect and it looks cool on the images and videos. You go through this video to learn that transition that's shown in this pop-up. And you can also download the project file from the link given in the description. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.